What is up everybody? Today I'm going to be starting a three part video series about my three favorite baits to catch redfish on in dirty water. Uh, it's definitely something that's important to know how to do because we're oftentimes in the summer faced with dirtier water conditions and knowing what to tie on and what to throw that might help you catch that redfish is, is very important. So I'm going to do these each bait in a different video so that I can really dive in and talk about why I like these baits in dirty water. So I'm going to go inside and lay that out so we can get started. But meanwhile, check out this sweet video of me running my boat through the marsh. Later. So like I was saying outside, this video series, we're gonna be going over my three favorite baits that I like to fish in dirty water conditions for redfish. I think in dirty water, it's so important to capitalize on any advantage that you can have because it's already gonna be harder for you to see the fish. And it's gonna be just as hard for that fish to find your bait. Today, we're gonna to go over the chatterbait. Chatterbait is my favorite bait for throwing for redfish in dirty water. And I really like just throwing a chatterbait in almost any conditions. I feel like the fish eat them really well and really aggressively. But the chatterbait was invented as a bass bait, along with a lot of other baits we now use for redfish. I think the chatterbait first hit the market in 2004. Um, it was invented down in Greenwood, South Carolina by a guy named Ron Davis. Um, and it took a little while for it to catch on to the redfish scene, but the people that do fish them now, I'm, I, I promise you, will tell you the same thing I'm gonna tell you today, that they flat out work. First off, I wanna talk to you about how a chatterbait works and exactly what it's doing in the water. So this is a chatterbait here. What you've got is this, kind of coffin shaped blade up above this jig head. So the blade is literally built into the jig head right there. There's some different styles of how people attach the blade to the jig head, but most of the ones I fish are just jig head to blade. And then you've got this little twisted piece of metal here that, that gets your line off of this blade just a little bit. And you can tie off to that and, and the blade works well like that. But you, like I said, you've got the blade, you've got the jig head, and you've got the skirt. This blade, as your line ties off to it, what it does is when you're reeling it through the water, it wobbles side to side. And that vibration on that wobble is, you can feel it all the way up through your line, through your rod, and it's, it's wobbling your hands a little bit while you're reeling. So it's throwing off a lot of movement underwater. Those fish are feeling it. They're sensing it coming past them. And I, I feel like they can feel it from a pretty good distance. I've been throwing these to, to big red fish in Louisiana. There was a day we were just catching a bunch of fish. And so I, I just had a chatterbait on the back platform and I was pitching it seeing how far away I could throw it to a redfish where he would still come and eat it. And I was getting fish to turn at like eight, nine feet, 10 feet away from that bait, turn and come track it down and eat it. So they can definitely sense this bait from, from quite a distance away. Like I said, there's a few different styles of chatterbait that vary in just how that blade works and how the line attaches to that blade, but they're all doing the same thing. Some you're gonna get a little bit tighter wobble, some you're gonna get a, a wider wobble, you'll feel it a little bit more through the rod tip. You can get chatterbaits in a lot of different weights. I'd say the majority of the chatterbaits that I fish are either 3 8 ounce or 1 half ounce. I like a heavier chatterbait because sometimes I like to do a little bit faster retrieve, but with the way that the blade works, on the chatterbait, it's it's gonna wanna ride up off the off the bottom if you reel it too fast. And so having a little bit heavier jig head where you can keep it down, um, I think is important. So the, the, there's one thing that's kind of different about the jig heads on a chatterbait, and not all of them are like this. I really like to have this feature on, on the chatterbaits I'm fishing. It looks just like a normal jig head here, but there's actually like a slight indention up above this bait keeper. There is a skirt keeper, so 
you can slide that skirt on here and it kind of locks into place right there. When a fish eats it, it's not gonna pull the skirt down onto the hook. So a lot of the chatterbaits you see that are on the market for redfish don't come with a skirt. And I'll fish them without a skirt sometimes, but I do really like fishing a skirt on a chatterbait. I love the extra movement that it adds. I don't think it's hurting throwing a skirted chatterbait for a redfish. I really don't. But what I like to do is I'll buy these other skirt packages from Z-Man. They've got a bunch of different colors. And so I can mix and match and kind of get the color I want. So this chatterbait came out of this package with this um, chartreuse skirt, chartreuse uh, jig head, and a silver blade. So I can't change the blade color and I can't change the jig head color, but I can start to kind of create what I want with changing out the trailer and changing out the color of the skirt. So I've got these here and we're gonna slide one of these on. They've got some gray in there and some chartreuse and yellow and a little bit of white. So you're getting a little bit more color out of the skirt here than you do out of the one that comes out of the box. So there's a hole right in the middle and you can stick the hook through that hole and slide that skirt all the way up. Let's see here. Slide that skirt all the way up and pop it into that little space and it'll stay locked in. So now you go from just having this shark, all chartreuse baits, so you get these, this color variation. You can come in and drop in whatever trailer color you want and kind of change up that bait just a little bit. Uh, I definitely think having the right color bait in the right condition helps. Another thing I'll oftentimes do with the skirt is I keep a pair of scissors on my boat and I'll, I'll trim that skirt to the right length. So if I'm fishing a certain trailer on that bait, I, I typically like for my skirt to come about the half the distance down that trailer. I don't want that skirt to be eating that whole trailer to where just the tail's sticking out. I like a little bit more of that bait there kicking back and forth. So as you're reeling, that skirt's gonna be flaring and you get a lot more movement when these are a little bit shorter. They'll puff out a little bit more as, as opposed to sticking back. So trimming the skirt isn't necessary, but it's, it's something that I, I find myself doing a lot if I'm changing up to a shorter trailer. So like I was saying, out of the package, there's only two things that you can change on these chatterbaits and that is the trailer and the skirt. So I like to keep, like I was saying, a nice selection of, uh, of chatterbait trailers as well as skirts available. So I can kind of tweak that color a little bit. I've definitely seen it where I've had big fish follow the chatterbait up to the boat and not eat it and, and made a color change and had them start eating it better. So when I'm fishing a chatterbait, I really like to have one brighter chatterbait with maybe a brighter blade tied on and a brighter trailer. And then I'll fish a darker chatterbait as well with the black blade or a brown blade because it's still going to be moving so much water but sometimes that flash is a little too aggressive for the fish and they won't eat it so kind of if i've got two clients on the boat or if i've got if there's two of us on the boat fishing i'll usually start off if i'm fishing chatterbaits give one of them a bright one with a bright colored trailer bright skirt bright blade on it i'll give another one a dark colored one with a darker skirt and a darker trailer and just let them start fishing and a lot of times it seems like it doesn't matter what color chatterbait it is and they're just really keen in on that wobble. But other times it'll be like one guy's really out fishing the other guy with a specific color. All right, so this is the darker style chatterbait color I'm talking about. And, and greens, blacks, purples, blues, any of those darker colors work well. But you're just fishing something that's not quite as abrupt and abrasive as this bright chartreuse and white is. Uh, they're still gonna get that wobble. They're still gonna feel that bait moving through the water. But it's gonna be a little bit more natural looking of a color, which is just like fishing a jig or anything like that. Um, fishing the more natural color sometimes works better. In Louisiana this year, I fished a lot of dark colored chatterbaits with dark colored blades. All right, so the last little piece we need to talk about is the trailers for these chatterbaits. I, I keep it pretty simple with trailers. I really only fish two different types of soft plastic, and that is creature baits, which is actually really a bass style soft plastic that still works really well for redfish, and then paddle tails. So depending on what kind of presentation I'm going for, I'll, I'll change between those two. I really like the way a paddle tail fits and acts with a chatterbait. You're getting that wobble, that vibration back and forth with the blade, and then you're getting that tail kick that's going along with that. My favorite paddle tail to fish behind a chatterbait would definitely be the Swimmer Z's by Z-Man. Got a really wide tail, a slim profile, and it just kicks really nicely. The speeds really match up between the, how fast the paddle tail is working as well as kind of the wobble on the chatterbait blade. So those fish really well together. Creature baits, the nice thing about a crawfish style creature baits is they've got some really interesting tail designs. And so you've got two, three different little tails coming off that are supposed to imitate claws, you know, of a crawfish or something like that. But you get a lot of paddling movement up and down and side to side, depending upon how you rig it. And it just adds into that, all that movement that's already on that chatterbait. Using this in dirty water and using this as a search bait, all the movement and vibration, I feel like definitely helps 
fish key in and find that bait. So with the retrieve on a chatterbait, there's really just three main ways that I'll have someone retrieve a chatterbait. The first is just a steady, slow roll, casting it out there, letting that chatterbait find the bottom, speeding it up just enough to keep it off the bottom and reeling it back into the boat. You'll feel that blade just vibrating back and forth really nicely when you're fishing it like that. There's not much to it. The second way, I'll do that steady retrieve, that same thing I was just talking about, but every once in a while, I'll give it a quicker pulse. You'll bring that rod tip a foot to two feet kind of quickly and let that chatterbait speed up and pulse a little bit harder and then slow it down, reel again, pulse it, slow it down, reel it again, pulse it. I think that pulsing really helps those fish kind of decide to eat that chatterbait. They might be following it for a second and that speed up or slow down is what triggers that bite. The third way I like to fish a chatterbait is just bumping it on the bottom like a jig. And that can mean either fishing it straight up like a jig, casting it out there, bouncing it off the bottom, bringing it back to the boat, or reeling it a little ways, stopping it, bouncing it, then getting it back up off the bottom, reeling it, stopping it, bouncing it. It's almost just like the pulse, but instead of speeding it up, you're slowing it down, letting it hit the bottom, and jumping it off the bottom a little bit. I've done really well with clients on the boat, as well as myself. When you're steady retrieving, just kind of bringing that chatterbait back to the boat just off the bottom, and you feel like you got a bite, there's no tension there, the fish didn't come tight, I'll stop it, I'll bounce it on the bottom a couple times, and a lot of times that fish will eat it then. So they might have missed it, they might have just bumped it, and then it slows down and hits the bottom and starts jumping around the bottom, and that fish will, will turn around and grab it again. That's also happened to me this year, actually, with sheep's head in Louisiana. I was having a lot of sheep's head eating the chatterbait on the way back to the boat, and we, you'd think it was a redfish, you'd keep reeling it in, and you get it to the boat, and a big sheep's head would take off. So we started stopping that chatterbait and jigging it on the bottom, and we actually caught a couple of those sheep's head on these chatterbaits. I wouldn't say that these are you know, your go-to lures for sheep's head by any means, but it's definitely cool to see them key in on that vibration and eat, eat these chatterbaits well. Just another fish that has fallen victim to the chatterbait. The last thing I wanna talk about is when a redfish eats the chatterbait, a lot of times it doesn't really feel like a bite because that vibration draws those fish in from quite a distance and they'll get up behind that bait and they'll, they'll surge forward to eat it, so they're having to overcome the speed of your retrieve. So it almost feels like just kind of a weird dead weight all of a sudden, or even just a little bit of slack. So if you feel that weird pressure during your retrieve, be sure to set the hook. I've had a lot of people not feel that bite or not think it's a bite, and then the fish kind of starts to feel that tension before they set the hook, turns, peels off some drag, and then the hook pops out because they were never able to get it set. So make sure if you feel anything that, that's a little off when, when slow rolling that bait back to you, set the hook, because it's probably a fish. This is the first video i'll be putting one up next week and another up the next week talking about my other two favorite baits to fish in dirty water for redfish i know the water's not that dirty at least not here in north county yet but we're right around the corner from summer and it's going to start getting dirtier and so having these baits in your boat in your tackle box will definitely pay off all right guys and as usual i hope that you learned something in this video that you can take and apply to your fishing this summer Definitely, if you don't have any chatterbaits, go pick some up today. You do not want to be without them next time you go fishing. And guys, thanks for checking out the video. If you like the video, please press the like button below. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos. Really enjoying doing this. I hope you're all enjoying them as well. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.